All right, come check this out. You gotta see something pretty wild and a little unsettling. Look how much that flex is. I mean, are propellers really supposed to flex that much? Yeah, I don't know. It's a little, a little hard to trust this thing. Yeah. Today, we're taking a close look at the lightest and thinnest aircraft propeller in the world. This is the Eprop Durandal three-bladed propeller, and it's so unbelievably thin, it's hard to believe that it's real. It also has very unique aerodynamic properties that I have never seen in a fixed-pitch propeller. It's not just incredibly light at less than five pounds installed, but it's supposed to produce more takeoff power and a higher cruise speed. Everything I had read online about it was positive, so positive, in fact, that I was skeptical could it actually be as good as people say? So I decided to find out if it's truly a game changer or just a bunch of hype. All right, if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I'm a huge proponent of experimental aviation. Now I'm selling experimental hats. But anyway, with experimental aviation and especially experimental light sport aircraft, you are free to do a lot of things that you couldn't with a certified airplane like that Cherokee sitting over there. So you're free to make modifications. If you have an experimental light sport like mine, you can do your own maintenance, sign off on condition inspections. If you take a class, I have a whole other video about it. There are some limitations to an experimental light sport. And one of them is that you cannot have a constant speed or in-flight adjustable propeller. Now I know Mosaic is coming out and these rules are probably gonna change, but anyway, that is currently a limitation for light sport. So with light sport aircraft, you're currently limited to a ground adjustable or fixed pitch propeller. So what are the drawbacks of that? With a fixed pitch propeller, you have to spend time on the ground adjusting the props pitch so that you get the best takeoff power and the best cruise, top end cruise. But since you can't change the blade's pitch angle in flight, you lose power either on takeoff or in cruise. Ideally, you want a high RPM on takeoff so that you get the most power out of it. You don't use a bunch of runway and you can climb really well. But your top end cruise is gonna suffer. You're gonna be running at high RPMs and not very fast. So that's something that I kind of fought with with my old uh, two-bladed Sensenich propeller. It did give me a good top end cruise, but it was kind of hard on the engine on takeoff. You know, I'd get about 49, 50 RPM on takeoff. So I wasn't getting the full 100 horsepower out of the Rotex. And then I started doing some research online on new propellers. And then I saw something called the E-Prop, the Durandal, which I think translates to a uh, sword or something. But anyway, it's this propeller from France and it is the craziest thing I have ever seen. I mean, take a look at these blades. They are pretty much paper thin at the tips. It's fully carbon fiber. The spinner is carbon fiber. The pitot tube for the RV-12 is carbon fiber. The hub, everything except the screws are carbon fiber. And the whole entire assembly only weighs about less than five pounds. But with this propeller, it comes with some really unique characteristics. This propeller can give you pretty much full takeoff RPM. And as you start picking up speed, the RPM drops back like a constant speed propeller. E-Props on their website, and on the forums, they kind of advertise this propeller as constant speed like or in-flight adjustable like propeller. But how in the world can a fixed pitch propeller behave like a constant speed or in-flight adjustable prop? E-Props calls it the ESR or extended speed range effect. One would think that a high static RPM is because the blade tips are stalled, but apparently that's not the case. E-Props says it's because the profile of each blade maintains its lift throughout all RPMs. E-Props isn't exactly clear on how it works aerodynamically, but if I were to guess, I think it's because of the blades flexibility. So today we're going to be using my new Insta360 X5 mounted on the wing to hopefully give us some insight on how the propeller is changing RPM. How if nothing moves here, how does it give you full takeoff RPM and a good high-end cruise at a lower RPM? I don't get it. So 
hopefully the Insta360 will give us a little bit of insight. I'm not sponsored by Insta360, but however, full disclosure, they did send me the camera and I love it. So we'll check it out. So yeah, let's go have some fun. Clear prop. We'll start the video analysis with the takeoff, which is where the E-Prop really shines. Like any normal takeoff, I'll give it full power and leave it there throughout the climb out. However, take a listen to the RPMs on the takeoff roll and let me know if you hear the change. Then we'll cut over to the Insta360 footage for a closer look at the prop to see if we can solve its aerodynamic mystery. Okay, did you hear it? Let's cut back to the Insta360 and repeat that takeoff. And I'll use a combination of the audio from inside of the cabin and the outside. So here is how I think the EPROP gives that extra kick of RPM on takeoff. When takeoff power is set, the propeller is heavily loaded, and under load, the blades flex forward, and you can see a subtle change from the video. When the blades are flexed forward, the spinning disc of the propeller decreases in diameter. The decrease in diameter makes the engine spin faster, and you can think of the classic physics videos and conservation of momentum. As the airplane gains speed, the prop becomes unloaded and the propeller blades straight and out again, thus decreasing the RPM. Now I'm sure this is a little simplistic and there are more aerodynamics in play, but let me know if you think my theory is correct. And climbing out at about a thousand feet per minute, 78 indicated. There's beautiful North Titusville, the Max D Brewer Bridge over there, and Arthur Dunn. This is such a pretty area. Right here is the intercoastal area of Titusville. Lots of uh, wildlife drive areas. There's Horseshoe Crab Island down there. Just a beautiful place to fly and to live. Before we get into the performance changes I've noticed with the EPROP, I want to take a moment to thank Insta360 for sending me the new X5 camera. This is the perfect camera for aviation videos for a multitude of reasons. Being able to record in all directions makes video editing a breeze, and the final product is so much more fun to watch. It has superb dynamic range and low light capability. Just take a look at this shot pointed directly into the sunrise. The colors of the background and the airplane aren't washed out, and there are no no dark areas. And for low light, here I am pulling the plane out of the hangar well before the sunrise. The Insta360 X5 also works perfectly inside the cockpit, capturing the view out the windscreen and the cockpit in perfect lighting. And the absolute best part about the camera is the battery life. When I record my flights, I set the camera to record and I forget about it. The real world battery life is about two and a half hours, which is really the longest I can stand flying anyway. Lastly, the form factor factor of the camera allows it to be mounted in an aerodynamic position, and when it's mounted at the wingtip, the drag it creates is unnoticeable even with the extended stick. And if you get a really big stick, you can get aerial shots without ever flying a drone, which is obviously not allowed at most airports. The Insta360 X5 is gaining popularity in the aviation community, and if you want to purchase one, check out the video description for an affiliate link. Thanks again to Insta360, now let's get back to the performance numbers. When I installed the EPROP, I decided to bias the pitch more for cruise. If I push the power to 5,350 RPM in flight, the RV-12 can easily reach the 120 knot speed limit for light sport airplanes. If I go more for an economy cruise at 5,150 RPM, I cruise at about 114 knots, which is great for an LSA, especially when you're burning about 5 gallons an hour. My takeoff distance is about the same as the two-bladed propeller, maybe a hair longer, however, my climb is about 
about 950 to 1000 feet per minute and even better when it's cold out I've seen up to 1200 feet per minute now the main reason I decided to try the EPROP was the overall smoothness and flight the Rotex 912 ULS is a geared engine which makes it sensitive to vibrations more vibration equals more wear on the gearbox the difference is night and day compared to the two bladed propeller some days it runs so smooth you'd find it hard to believe you were flying behind a piston engine when shutting down the engine my old two blade would shudder throughout the airframe and I just knew this would eat the gearbox over time. The EPROP removed a significant amount of vibration, especially on shutdown. So yes, the EPROP is a game changer for cruise speed, reduction in weight, and overall buttery smoothness. But here are some potential drawbacks. Number one is how it looks. This is definitely personal preference, but the two-bladed Sensenich does look better in my opinion. But now that I've tried the EPROP, it's going to be tough to go back to a two-blade. And well, the looks of the EPROP are growing on me. The full carbon fiber construction is susceptible to fading, especially if the plane is parked outside. And this is why it comes with neoprene covers to protect it from the sun, which is something that really all composite structures suffer from. I also don't really know how well it's going to hold up over time. I have about 25 hours on the prop, and EPROPS does say that it can last 4,000 hours before overhaul, which honestly sounds a little unrealistic. So I'll just continue to monitor its condition. I also know that carbon fiber is incredibly strong, but I don't know how well the EPROP would fare in the event of something like a bird strike. Probably well, but it's just so thin it's hard to believe. Overall, the EPROP Durandal 3 pairs wonderfully with the RV12, and in my opinion, it is superior to my old 2-blade. The only thing left to see is its longevity. Thank you all for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't as we're about to reach 100,000 subscribers. It's been so fun to make aviation videos and share them with you. And let me know what you think of the EPROP and until then, blue skies and I'll see you on the next flight. Engine speed. Pressure.